Okay, I get this question all the time. Jamie, where do you get all your billions of dollars to build all these things? I'm paraphrasing, of course. Is there inheritance or something? Okay, no inheritance, no trust fund or anything like that. Mostly, I'm just thrifty. You can also say I'm, I'm cheap. Let me uh, show you a few of my uh, money-saving tactics. Basically, I could sum it up by I will give up convenience for savings. Uh, first, I should mention that, you know, my whole income right now comes from you guys. So super, super thanks. And, uh, you know, you guys also donate tools and different things at various times. And oh, I, I try to make sure I stretch that stuff as far as I can. All right, so here we go. Someone mentioned that this is a $10,000 boat. And yeah, if I bought all the materials new, roughly $10,000, maybe even a little more. Now, one thing is I got these solar panels for free from a company in Europe called Solbion. I try to mention their name a lot because they super hooked me up. Those are not cheap solar panels. They're the biggest, the biggest ticket item on this boat. So I got those for free. Um, the biggest expense for me was the fiberglass. So, you know, I'd buy, buy a full tank of polyester resin and full rolls of fiberglass to try to keep the cost as low as possible. But that was the, the least negotiable price on, on the boat. Take things like the propeller and all these steel and aluminum pipes and stuff. All those were scrap uh, that I just bought various places when people were either getting rid of them or they were in the garbage. Some of the stuff I just picked up off the side of the road. I did buy the steel pipe. That's the, the propeller shaft. I think that's the only thing... I bought new that wasn't at least you know a bulk purchase like like the fiberglass bulk purchase all the other stuff uh, was either used or scrap like the motor it's a six hundred dollar motor I got for thirty dollars on Amazon just by keeping an eye out and like going through listings and listings and listings and then suddenly I found this used one and blam took it and then the, the charge controller I did buy that new but again you know I I, I did lots of looking around before I found uh, one at the lowest price I could find. The speed controller for the motor, I got that from some guy who bought it years ago, never used it, and decided he was getting rid of it. So my total cost on that boat was about $1,500. So like 10% of the cost if it was all new. Uh, maybe a little more than 10. I also recently got a delivery. Let's see, I spent $570 on stainless steel, nuts, bolts, washers, rivets. Some of them were aluminum, aluminum rivets. This was $165 worth of rivets, uh, 5,000 of them. If you buy 5,000 at once, you get a better price. Now, if I go to town and buy those rivets and I buy a full bag of 500, I can haggle them down to eight cents per rivet. These were 3.3 and delivered to Panama, maybe three and a half cents each. So less than half the price and they're higher quality. And uh, I do that with, you know, all my, well, I got some other rivets here, stainless steel ones. And then these are all bags of nuts and bolts and washers, all, all high quality stainless steel too. So when I do things like that, I can save more money, get higher quality things than I could get in the store for a lot lower price. One of the other ways I shop is represented in this box. So this was some guy on eBay had just piles, like bags and bags of stainless steel uh, bolts and nuts and stuff and aluminum you know, standoff things. I would never buy these normally, but now I have a ton of them. Um, but if I bought all this stuff, you know, individually, it would cost a lot more. So I don't get to pick what I'm going to get, but I get a whole bunch of stuff, really cheap price. And I also kind of like just having a pile of materials that I can root through. It helps me get my brain going. It gives me ideas of how to put things together rather than just uh, you know designing things with exact sized rivets and bolts and everything, because then you have to go buy them all. 
and it takes longer. But not here. I can just I can just pull out handfuls of stuff and see what I have. I also know a guy in town who collects scrap metal and sells it at the you know scrap place. And I always go visit him and I buy pretty much any stainless steel or aluminum stuff he has. So last time I went there, which was a couple days ago, he just had a little bit of stuff in a bag. And this was three dollars of stainless steel stuff. You know, it's kind of weird stuff, some of it, like watch and bracelet parts. But some of it's like really useful stuff. Anyway, I just take whatever he has, if he has anything. I got this stainless keg a while ago. I've been saving it for a really good purpose. I'm not sure what yet, but I think it was $10. These pipes here on the front of the boat were from a weed whacker, like the, the long part of the weed whacker. I got this pile of aluminum stuff for 20 bucks. Super useful stuff. And I got some heavy duty stainless sheet. These were $30 total. And that's a millimeter and a half. It's pretty thick. I think my bulldozer here is about 95% used or even scrap parts. Even the wheels, I bought those used. Okay, in my workshop here, I did buy this new. This I got for free, broken, repaired it. That was refurbished. This was donated by one of you guys. I just had to pay to get it shipped here. Uh, I have a little bit of fix to do on it. This I got for half price. I had to fix it a little bit. This was donated by one of you guys too. Like basically everything in there. Milling machine and some other parts. Buckets of drill bits and a bunch of other tools over here. I got on Craigslist. It was just some guy selling his workshop, so I bought the whole thing. Oh, cleaning up in here is today's job. Now that I got the boat pretty much wrapped up, I'm gonna clean out all the stuff, put it all away. Oh, speaking of cleaning up, yeah, all of this was newest boat associated. I need to, yeah, I'll get it. Oh, and this box was an extra super amazing deal. I don't remember what the, what I paid for these, but it was about a, a quarter of the price that I would normally pay for uh, like bulk amounts of bolt because it was just some guy on eBay again who doesn't normally sell bolts and is like, well, I've got these eight bags of bolts, so I'm just selling them dirt cheap. And I, <clears throat> I took all of them and then went somewhere else and found the associated nuts to fit. I think the nuts almost cost as much as the bolts. So in a nutshell, I always try to repair things instead of throwing them out. I try to use materials that will last long as, as opposed to disposable stuff. And uh, I'll take any good opportunities that come up, even if they're inconvenient. Like I'll buy 5,000 rivets all at once, even though I don't need 5,000 rivets all at once, but I get a better price and I will use them over the next five or ten years a couple quick lifestyle tips beyond that one whenever I buy food I buy ingredients I don't buy prepared food so when I come out of the grocery store I have nothing I can eat on the spot except maybe a piece of fruit or something it's uh, healthier and it costs a lot less and whenever there's something to solve I don't I don't buy something or I don't use money to solve the problem first I try to solve it without money there's a tendency in our culture to Whenever there's a problem, immediately pay for something, buy something, call someone, hire someone. But a lot of times you can solve problems just with some gumption. Some gumption! Get out there and get some gumption! All right, I'm gonna go root around in my mystery box here. See what other weird stuff I got. Ho 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 ho! Yeah! Next, I'm keeping my eyes out for a Beverly Shear. It's a thing for cutting metal. Not, not a human being named Beverly Shear.